Big field, huge talent, massive prize on the line, the men's 10,000 metre final. Tanaka, Asian junior silver medalist a couple of years ago. Kisa, he's run a sub-205 marathon. And here is the world record holder, the defending world champion and the Olympic silver medalist, Joshua Cheptegei. A national hero in Uganda, they will be watching all over the country. Worku, world junior title. Joe Klecker won the trials, his mum is an Olympian. And Takaratimana of Burundi, one of two Burundi athletes in this one. Jacob Kiplimo, world half marathon record holder, world half marathon champion, got a bronze behind Cheptegei and Borega last summer. Ugandans in the crowd celebrating before the race has even started. Ito of Japan. Then to McGorty. Third in the trials. Jack Rayner, twice a national champion. Ran an area record in March. That's Rogers Quemoy. He made the top eight of the Olympic final last year. Matteo, third in the Canadian trials. Talby of Morocco waving to the crowd. There's Patrick Diva, NCAA champion last year. But can Borrega do the double? He took the Olympic title last year. He's so fast. 1,500, 5,000 and the 10,000 metres. Mohamed Ahmed, the silver medalist last year, over the five. Fast becoming a massive contender come the big stage. Will he take some inspiration from Cameron Rogers, the Canadian just taking silver in the women's hammer? Aragawi is the other Ethiopian who we haven't seen, and Naburi of Kenya. There's Kameli, former Kenyan, and represents Belgium, 3.36 and a 13.04 man. And there is Aragawi. He won the Diamond League here in 12.50, so my gosh, he can run. Kuzera is the other Burundi athlete, 26.56 over 10k. There's Gressier, who had that PB of 13.08 in the Paris Diamond League. And Mburi from a World Youth and World Junior medalist. Samuel, World Junior bronze last year. This field is absolutely loaded. Mayo, European under-23 champion a couple of years ago. And here's Grant Fisher. Listen to the noise. Seventh on the all-time list in March with 26.33. No Americans ever won a medal in this race. Rupp's come the closest with fourth in Moscow nine years ago. 24 men, only one will be crowned champion. This is the final of the 10,000 metres. The track equivalent of the marathon gets underway. If you've ever run a 10,000, and I have, not as quickly as these men, I hasten to add, it is a brutal, brutal race. Tough conditions, but a wonderful atmosphere. The crowd here fully appreciative of their distance running. This is Steve Prefontaine territory. Oh, now there's been a, a little bit of an altercation there. I wonder if we might get a chance to see that again. It looked as though it might have been Jimmy Gressier taking offence at somebody chopping him up. Now, chapter guy is bridging that gap to the two early leaders, recognising that not everyone is willing to let this turn into a, a dawdle for the first few laps and then speed it up. It's Mayo, the former European under-23 champion from Spain, who leads, and he's going to try and turn this into an honest pace. That's uh, 66.7 for the first lap. So that is, just to put that in context, yeah, that's good running, it's 27 and a half. So, this is interesting, Hannah. This is, I think, just those open... Oh, that was a full fall there from Umbudo. It did look like it was almost a tangle with Carlos Mayo, so that could have been what kind of motivated Carlos Mayo to go, I'm not interested in this. Jimmy Gressier having time to all, look all the way around. Isaac Camoli raising his hand saying, wasn't me? I had nothing to do with that, but Umbudo, luckily, up running there, and that is uh, just part and parcel of endurance running. I saw some boards this morning in marathon as well. And the Kenyan athletes had to kind of deal with a fall like that as well. Mayo happy to be out in the lead. We saw Elvish McColgan, another European athlete, lead the women's 10,000 metres. Look at that, Carlos Mayo is just drifting to the outside there, offering the lead to Grant Fisher. 
and go out and fish. She went, no thanks, mate, I'm all right. I fancy my sprint finish. I don't want to be out there in the lead at this stage. But Carlos Mayo, he is stretching this field out. 66 second lappings, very good running. And Carlos Mayo, we've talked about this warm weather, but if you, you live and train in Spain, you probably be pretty used to these kind of conditions. And Carlos Mayo doing really well, and that will inspire the likes of Jim Gressier behind him. These two competed so much in the age groups. And we've got a kilometer, first kilometer split in the moment. He's looking up at the screen a lot. I feel like he would love someone else to get involved in some of this early leading. 2.45 is a great opening kilometre. I'm asking questions of the field right about. Well, it's bang on 27.30 pace, and he obviously decided before the race began that he didn't want to allow this to turn into a very tactical first half of the race. It's a rather different dynamic to the one that unfolded yesterday in the women's race and I'm very interested in the fact that Joshua Cheptegei has clearly recognised that Moya is a good enough, a Mayo rather, is a good enough runner to make this a very honest pace and he's not just going to dawdle because Cheptegei followed the move right from the front. There's Mburu going down, he gets a little clip, might have got involved with Kameli and Werku. So he's gone down once and he's been tripped a couple of times as well. Uh, look out as well for Kleckers. He's running just behind Joshua Cheptegei in single file. And there are two other Ugandans in that race. It's Stephen Kisa who's running in fifth at the moment. He was second in Hamburg with a national record of 204.48. So one of the reasons I love the 10,000 metres, Hannah, you've got out-and-out -out marathon runners like Kisa stepping back down to the track and you've got really fast 1500 meter runners like Salomon Borrega the Olympic champion who's back in the pack who can step all the way up to the 10,000 so the middle distance athletes meet the marathon runners on the track at a midway distance of 25 laps fascinating and we get the treat for some cross-country athletes in there as well just good check to guy picking up Uganda's first ever world gold medal at the world cross-country championships obviously went went on to take that title in Doha but the likes of Isaac Camelli and um, Gracia, Jim Gracia of France, a great cross-country runner, so it really is a massive mix down there. Great to see the Americans, two, four, and six, putting on a really good show, and Grant Fisher, USA is so excited about him. He kind of worked his way through the whole system, he won the Foot Locker Championships, sub four in high school, and an NCA champion at his time at Stanford University. Very content to sit there in second place. A lot of his teammates and training partners have had a great first couple of days. We saw Courtney Ferrex qualify in the women's sleeper chase. Carissa Schweitzer in the women's 10,000 metres yesterday go third all time in the US. And a great return to form for Evan Jager making the final in the steeper chase. So Grant Fisher and Mo Ahmed, who's content to sit at the back at the moment, the Canadian 5,000 metre medalist. They've got to be looking at their teammates and going, OK, we've got this right, we've peaked ourselves well, and take a little bit of extra confidence into this men's town, 10,000 metres. I'm just watching back in the pack. Salomon Borrega not interested in what's going on at the front, courtesy of Mayo and the likes of Fisher. He's just buried in the pack, just out of shot now, as the camera's focusing in on the Spaniard leading. Good grouping by the Americans, as you mentioned. A Cheptegei in third, Kisa in fifth, Kapimo back in the pack. I love watching Salomon Borrega run because he's so, so quick towards the business end. He's had a couple of wobbly runs this year where he hasn't been quite on top form over the 5,000 metres. But when he gets it right, he's absolutely irresistible to watch. I think you're right, Salomon Borrega, he has had a quiet season, but if you cast our minds back to the indoor season, it was very similar there. He was beaten by Lemetra Gurma, the steeplechase athlete, a couple of times, and it took all the way until Belgrade, really, for us to see the form of Salomon Borrega, and he did end up winning that World Indoor Championships, 3,000 metres, and he showed all his speed and all his tactical prowess there. So I'm not necessarily concerned that Salomon Borrega of Ethiopia hasn't had a scintillating season so far because he often finds that extra gear when we move into the championship season. And 
you'd expect him to do the same, perhaps inspired by Lentessa Bet Gide yesterday and Tamalit Tola taking that gold medal in a championship record this morning for Ethiopia in the men's marathon. So Salomon Brega has got plenty to live up to. The Ethiopian team are having a good championship so far. But he's so experienced. And he'll be very happy that this is spread out and he doesn't necessarily have to think about making a big move. But he's, a, he's quite a long way off Joshua Cheptegei. Joshua Cheptegei there, just on your screens, with a red bib indicating that he is the defending champion. Couldn't quite make it Olympic and world titles. Getting out kicked quite convincingly by Solomon Brega in Tokyo in the end. Well, and there was a good reason for that, because Brega ran 53.9 for the last lap. So, a little bit of team tactics at play here. All of a sudden, after Mayo doing the early pacemaking duties, Kisa and Cheptegei go one and two with Jacob Kiplimo, the other Ugandan, back in around about eighth or ninth, and still no move yet from Salomon Borrega. But I wonder now, now that the Ugandans have hit the front, Borrega will be watching very carefully. He'll be able to see on the huge screen, well, there are two, one on either end of the arena. He might start having a little look and moving through the field. And as I say that, at least two of the three Ethiopians have decided to come through, and Borrega is one of them. Coming up on the outside to now place himself. There's the first of, there's the, first of the Ethiopians, Worku, the world junior champion last year, and there comes Borrega, recognising the danger. Oh, look at that. We've got the world champion in second place, and we've got the Olympic champion in third or fourth. Mayo still on the kerb in third with Borrega fourth and the three Americans bunched up there. Borrega was watching and waiting for that move and he's covered it straight away. Really smart running there from the Olympic champion Simon Borrega. The Ethiopian team deciding not to let their athletes double last year in Tokyo. So Simon Borrega didn't get to come back and have a go at the 5,000 metres and Joshua Cheptegei did end up taking that gold medal. But, you know, as with Perith Chemetai in the women's steeplechase, you kind of go, well, hey, come on, what would have happened if Salomon Borrego was in it? We'll, we'll get a look later in the week. Cheptegei and Salomon Borrego are both entered for the men's 5,000 metres. But they've got a job to do here first. And Kissa is doing a job for Joshua Cheptegei, just keeping this pace moving. We cast our minds back to Doha. It was a pretty quick race. Joshua Cheptegei managing to run the sting out of Solomon Borrego that time. Borrega turning the tables in Tokyo, getting that sprint finish, so I'm sure that will be playing in Joshua Cheptegei's mind. I cannot tell you the excitement that this race will be generating in Uganda. I've been fortunate to spend quite a lot of time in East Africa, in Ethiopia, Kenya and Uganda, and all up and down the banks of the Nile in the capital, Kampala, and in Jinja, there'll be cracking open a cold one, and they'll be getting excited to see Kisa running first, and Cheptegei, their hero, in second. But there is a long, long way to go, and there are a lot of high-quality athletes still tracking the two Ugandans, including Salomon Borrega. He looks so comfortable. Good run by Mayo, isn't it? A really positive, deciding to go to the front. You know, could be easily intimidated by a race in which we have the world record holder, the Olympic champion, the world champion, and a whole host of area and global medalists. But it's, what are we now? Just 11-11 at 4,000. So they've drifted a little bit, Hannah. They were running pretty much on the nose, 27-30 at 66s. They've now drifted out to just inside 28-minute pace, which is why no-one's been dropped off the back. And maybe that's why Joshua Cheptegei has looked at his watch as we, you know, head towards the halfway stage and thought, right, OK, I do need to start winding this up a little bit. Let's get this pack down to a more manageable size for the second half of the race. Yeah, it really is starting to bunch a little bit, and that's maybe why you can see the likes of Canada's Mo Ahmed just content to sit at the back. He knows this race hasn't really got running, but you'd want to think with the likes of Joshua Cheptegei on the front, 
You want to be pretty involved. It's a good run there from Eritrea's Habitum Samuel. He was moving up the outside. He took a bronze medal at the World Junior Championships behind Tedese Werku, who's down there. So perhaps he thought, I don't know how to run with that guy. I'll get back on terms. But you can see as there's a group there, they're starting to cut across each other, cutting each other up a tiny bit. Yes, I was just watching. One of the athletes almost fell and then came wide to make sure that he moved halfway up the pack. We've had Stanley and Buru falling. And that's always the danger when you're in these big groups. Heels can be clipped. In fact, it was Mo Ahmed who almost took a tumble. He's become such a great distance runner. He's enjoyed global success over the 5,000 metres with bronze medals in Doha and Tokyo. He's finished just off the podium in the 10,000, but maybe this will be a different day for him. He's halfway through the pack. Camera just focusing in on the early leader, which is Mayo, now back in the pack. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We've had Cheptegei and Kisa leading. And now the Ethiopians deciding to take this on. Borrega hits the front just a shade before we get to halfway. The Olympic champion, clearly, Hannah, feeling confident. And look, he's such a hard, he is such a hard athlete to beat because he can sit at the back of a very tactical race and burn up a 53, but he also knows not just talking about that 26.44 PB, but the athletes here also know he's run 12.43 for the 5,000 metres, and he's run very, very quick 1,500s. He is really, really hard to beat because he can win this race any way they choose to throw it at him. So about 400 metres ago, he really asked to get out. He put his, hand, put his right hand out and said, you know, I want to exit here. The athletes let him out in respect, letting him do that. But I wonder if he's slowed this down, because I was thinking, some Mamborega, he doesn't need to be at the front. He's got such a kick. Um, so that maybe having a go at slowing it down, and you can see that the other athletes have lost their patience there. They don't want it to be that slow. I think it's Kalimo, the half marathon specialist, pushing at the front now, and work who's gone with him. But yeah, they've dropped to 67. I think it was 68 the lap before that, a 2.49 kilometer. So Kalimo going, no way, pal. I need to, all my half marathon strength on show here. I'm not going to hang around running like that. We're going to get this race going. I feel like this move from Jacob Kalimo could be one that would split this field apart and really get it going. I totally agree. When Jacob Kalimo goes to the front with a world record of 57.31 and an Olympic bronze in his locker behind Borrega and Cheptegei last year, you know it's serious game on here there will be no more bunching and no more games being played at halfway he knows his best chance of a medal is to turn this into an honest pace and within what probably 400 meters they are just about running in single file Kiplimo deciding enough's enough with the games so how about this the world half marathon record holder leads. The Olympic champion is in second. The world champion is in third. And the reason for that is that rather than at their pace, dawdling around in 66s and 68s and 69s, he's put in a 64 plus change. And that's the reason the field has been split apart. A definitive tactical move here by Jacob Kiplimo. And now we have a truly fascinating race on our hands the number of men down there that have got to concentrate the gaps are gonna start opening up the pace might ease off again i don't think so though jacob Kalimo, we've only seen one outdoor race from him so far this season he ran 729 in stockholm but he got beaten by a man who's not here dominic labalu with the athlete refugee team but it was almost a surprise victory i don't think jacob Kalimo saw him coming he got past just with 20 meters to go but that seven sub 7.30 clocking for 3,000 metres is great when your best distance is a world mar half marathon record. Another quick lap there, 64 seconds. You can see that's the fastest kilometre I think we've had as we move through six kilometres and it's really broken the field apart. Jimmy Gracier of France just moved himself ahead of the other Europeans back there. 
Carlos Mayo and Isaac Camelli trying to do everything he can to crack into the top 10, top 8 here. And just as I say that, Camelli's got no ironing to get myself back on that group as well. All three Americans have managed to get themselves with this lift of pace. But Jacob Kalimo is piling on the pressure. I wonder if, Je if uh, Joshua Cheptegei knew this was going to happen as he slotted himself into second place really well. Wow, this is turning into a fantastic race. This is real bravery here from Jacob Kiplimo. A 64-second lap right in the middle of a searingly hot 10,000 metres with a seriously hot cast list. And look at that. He's out into lane two, tucks back in, blocking Worku. The Ethiopian, as Joshua Cheptegei now leads. These two are good friends, they get on well back home in Uganda. There are definite team tactics at play here. And the Kenyans now getting involved in the mix in this lead group. Gressier hanging on nicely, just towards the back of that group. You mentioned the Americans, what a story it would be if they could go well. Schwarzer had a, she had a PB yesterday by quite some big margin, didn't she, coming home inside the top 10. So really good running from the American women in the 10,000 metres. But we're watching here the world record holder, the world champion, the world cross-country champion, Joshua Cheptegei, taking on the man who beat him to the Olympic 10,000 metre title last year, Salomon Borrega, who is on his shoulder. All three medalists from last year are in first, second and third, but they're in a different order. Is that how they will finish? Brilliant images just off the camera shot there. The Ethiopian and Kenyan flags flying high here in the stadium, as well as those from Uganda, the three proud East African nations well represented in the crowd. I've just seen a Ugandan flag. This, this could develop, Hannah, into one of the great 10,000 metre races. Good performance there from Mburo after that early fall and getting tangled up. He's managed to stick with his teammates. All three Kenyans up there, Kamoi, Mateko and Mburo. The highest finisher was Mateko with seventh place, was Kemoi with seventh place in the Tokyo Olympics. And that, that would have been devastating for Kenya as a nation. They love to compete at the front of these 10,000 meter races, these endurance races. It's part of their culture and they're so proud. And to see those three Kenyan men up there, could they be working together? Could they be motivating each other to try and live with this pace that's been set by the world record holder? 76, so they've eased off a tiny bit from that 64 second lap, and it's just allowed the rest of these athletes into the, back into the field. But Grant Fisher was going to be the only man that was going to live with this hot pace from that second pack. But just a slight foot off the gas, ever so slightly from Joshua Cheptegei, has just Constantine of this group back together and every lap that goes by that's outside of that 63-64 Solomon Borrego is going to be thinking thanks very much, do you remember my sprint finish from Tokyo? If not, you're going to see it in a few laps time I think this race might be beginning to play into the hands of Solomon Borrego, good running by Fisher who remember is 7th on the all-time list, Ahmed just behind him has won medals over to 5,000 in the last two global races in Doha and in Tokyo Cheptegei still leads, Gressier coming wide on the outside cameras focusing in on the other two Americans who are still in that group only 6 laps to go now, the world champion leads from the Olympic champion but this has slowed a fraction. We weren't necessarily expecting this. Now, there are slight question marks with Joshua Cheptegei. He's one of the greats. He's the finest distance runner Uganda has ever produced, arguably alongside Stephen Kipritich, who won the marathon in 2012. But we've only really seen him on the track once this year when he ran that 12.57. And there are plenty of men in the field who've gone quicker. And there are a lot of athletes queuing up behind the world record holder and the world champion, including the Olympic champion. This looks to me like it's beginning to play into the hands of Salomon Borrega. 53.9, remember, 
that was the run and that was the acceleration that took him to the Olympic title last year in Tokyo and he is tracking every move he's like an unwanted shadow on the shoulder of Joshua Cheptegei and he looks comfortable the Ethiopian in second place Solomon Borrega looks full of running. Look at that move from Isaac Canelli there. Has he been inspired by Bashir Abdi's bronze medal this morning in the marathon? That's the highest that we've seen Isaac Canelli so far. So proficient over cross-country, European cross-country championships. He's picked up medals left, right and centre. Matthew from Belgium just gliding up into the top five, perhaps thinking as they've moved through two kilometres to go, if he wants to get this race moving, he's got to Grant Fisher navigating this so well. Klecker beat him in the USA Championships with a fantastic kick. But kicking at your national championships is not the same as, as kicking at a world championships. Joshua Chaptegai knows that. Berega knows that. It's great to see Tadase Werku, the young Ethiopian, just keeping himself in contact there. Could he convert a world junior medal into a senior medal here? But the Kenyan trio just seem to be really asserting themselves in the middle of this pack. They're really keen to make sure they can live with the attacks from Uganda and from Ethiopia. This is a huge pack. They have one mile to go, and everybody is still in it. Everybody and some other people we wouldn't have expected to be here at this stage. Just inside, four laps to go in the final of the men's 10,000 metres. The world champion and world record holder Joshua Cheptegei leads, but he has an awful lot of athletes queuing up behind him, and he's just had a little glimpse over his shoulder, and he will have seen the Olympic champion, Salomon Borrega. Isaac Kameli, the former Kenyan representing Belgium, is there. Rogers Quemoy coming up on the outside. He was seventh in the Olympic final last year. Mburu was just blocked on the curb there, and now there are one or two running wide on the outside as Joshua Cheptegei begins to start this long drive for home. I think he's recognised that he's got to get rid of some of the athletes in this group and he's put a in noticeable injection of pace together. So the previous lap was 67. Has Joshua Cheptegei significantly lifted his pace? You'd think the way this group is shuffling around would suggest that something's happening down there, that that pace is lifted. Everybody's desperately looking for position. Keep your eye on Gar Aragari of Ethiopia. 64 seconds, that's what we thought might have happened. But Aragari on the outside, he's a phenomenal 5,000 metre runner. He's a second Ethiopian in the pack and he's quietly making moves to stay involved he's got a super sprint finish could he be one to watch out for as well Aragawi still in that group Jacob Kiplimo is there Fisher, Klecker for the first time allowing a little bit of a gap to open up starting to jostle for position we've lost one of the Ethiopians Tedese Werku, the world junior champion is in that little group just to the right hand side there's furious jockeying for position going on here. And Borrega now leads Umburu. What a story it would be if he won after falling on the first lap. Borrega leads Umburu in second. Aragawi coming up. Chetagai's got himself a little bit boxed. Diva of Great Britain quite rightly moving on the outside. And Stephen Kiesa will have to do that soon. He doesn't realise the pack are coming and he's about to get swamped getting super congested down there three laps to go 63 so they've gone 64 63 and they've got just two laps to go all of these men are jostling for position there's a lot of 5,000 meter specialists down there Mo Ahmed doing well to hold on near the back there the Canadian just up the inside of his teammate Grant Fisher they train together but Aragawi he holds the world record for 5,000 meters on the road took that record from Joshua Cheptegei who's just trying to get himself back around the outside of this group it is only 600 meters to go Solomon Borrega in Tokyo last year he put in a spurt at the bell got a gap on the two Ugandans and they could not get back on terms with him just 5,000 meters to go the tactics are going to come down to the wire in this men's 10,000 meters inside the last 500 meters this is a huge group of hugely talented men and take a second to listen to the noise it's deafening here at Hayward Field who is going to create history this is the stadium where they say feel the glory any one of these men could win it you're watching a very, very special race here. Cheptegei, the world champion, the defending champion, driving for glory for Uganda. They'll be on their feet 
in Ginger, in Kampala, but they're also on their feet in Addis Ababa. Aragawi hasn't been burnt off yet. Barega's in second. Sheptegai opens up a metre. The crowd are roaring for Grant Fisher. No Americans ever won a medal in this race. Sheptegai, the world champion. Can he win it again? Last year, he was burnt up by Salomon Barega. But the champion from Doha is the champion once again here in Eugene. Cometh the hour, cometh the Ugandan. That is the best performance we've ever seen from Joshua Cheptegei. He was under so much pressure. Borrega has had a great season. Last year, it was a 53-second last lap that cost Joshua Cheptegei the gold. This year, it's Cheptegei who's run 53.4, and that is why he is now a multiple world champion over 10,000 metres. They threw everything at him in that race, and just as he found in Doha, he had the answers. It hasn't been a perfect season, but it's been the perfect finish. I've never heard a noise like it on the last lap of a 10,000 metres. This world championship is delivering again and again and again. And Joshua Cheptegei is the champion of the world and the toast of a proud nation on the other side of the world.